In this chapter, we'll be discussing some various basic topics in programming in JavaScript. We'll start off by explaining variables. Variables are representations of literal values we can use, where variables store values to be used or manipulated for later use. So basically, while we're at it, I should mention, I think I mentioned last time that every line of code ends with a uh, semicolon. So you should always keep that in mind. I'm just a recap from last time. It's pretty JavaScript is pretty lenient about it. Sometimes you can forget it and JavaScript won't say anything, but it's better practice to use these. So, okay, so let's begin. So let's start off by explaining variables in JavaScript. Now, we declare variables in JavaScript by writing out var. So see here in my auto and my auto completion there's var already. And here after that we name our variables. So let's call it a equals and the equal sign means we're going to assign a value to be associated with this variable name like in mathematics so you have like you have the letter x that means translates to some sort of value. So here is kind of the same case. So let's say a equals 5 and then we're going to have a semicolon. So here we're saying okay, we're going to say now a a letter a, a variable a is going to be associated with the value 5. So every time we call a, so let's say um I don't know, console log and we're going to say a. So every time we call a it's going to give us the return the value 5 in whatever operation we're doing. And this value can be manipulated as well, which we'll see in a second. So here, let's make another variable called var b. And we're going to set it equal to 7. So every time we have every time we call b, we'll be working with the value 7. So here I said console log, so I want to display to my console the letter a. And then I'm going to do the same thing, console log for letter b. And then I'm going to do the same console log again for a plus b. So this is a mathematical operation. We'll talk about these more in detail in the upcoming sections. But what I'm saying here is now, so give me the value stored at a plus the value stored at b and return that result. So JavaScript is kind of cool. You don't have to, so you don't have to store these or anything. You just write it out directly. I think you could do this. You could probably, yeah, you can do this in any other programming language as well. But here, yeah, so we're basically taking the values from A and B and adding them together like this. And they're not, these, just so you know, are not stored because they're not stored in a variable. If we made C, which I'll do in a second, we can do just that. So let's test this result. Okay, so just checking my um, HTML so I know that um, everything is ready. Okay, so we're going to open JS course. We're going to open index.html was that okay so it's blank here because I'm only looking at I want my own I'm only interested in the console so let's do this all right there we go so here's value a here's value B and here is a plus B so you can like here so uh, this letter translates to some sort of value it could be it doesn't have to be a number here which we'll see in the next coming sections as well this is just an example it could be pretty much any type of data that we have in JavaScript but we can actually if we have another variable, let's say C, and then we can actually store, we can call the same variables again. So this is, I, I say calling, that means I'm, I'm, I'm talking, I'm taking this value and writing it again. So I'm calling it, and then I can store the value, this sum, into another variable. So because this translates to a literal value. So you can just use it as you can use variables as if they were real numbers as well or real values. Like so like if this was a long huge number, you can just call it by a. So let's actually make this bigger now. So let's say 555. Here let's say 777. And you don't want to type 555 plus 777 every time, right? So we're just going to store it to C. And you'll see here that we get the same result as if we added them directly. So we're going to save that. We're going to refresh this page in my fire in my browser. Let's just do it. Here we go. And then we get that result. So 
basically. So we could store variables to other variables if that make. We could store values of variables to other variables if that makes sense. So, all right. So moving on, we let, let me talk about the little the sort of leniency in JavaScript a little. So JavaScript is interesting in a way that. So let's define var a. Right now, by itself, you can. It's actually a good practice like this in JavaScript. This is a thing called hoisting we do in JavaScript. Is that all variables and functions inside our in our script in our code are initialized and declared at the beginning of the JavaScript of the script because this helps our load times. Well, it helps speed up our load times in a web page because oftentimes a web page is really fancy has a lot of things going on in it so we want to make the actual interpreter do at least the least amount of work as possible so like this we're splitting up our tasks so it's good practice to have our variables decline before they're even used and then later we just call them because if you call them and then assign them it's kind of doing two op operations at once if you kind of understand what that means and this this thing this sort of technique is called hoisting, where you have variables declared and functions declared. Right, we'll also be working with functions later on in the tutorial in the se tutorial series. Excuse me, and it's just good to know that it's good practice to declare variables before anything occurs with them. So like this, if we console if we console log console excuse me console log a, you're gonna see that it's undefined. See, I'm going to just to show you that the semicolon sometimes doesn't really matter. I'm just going to refresh here and it says undefined because A is declared but it's undefined. There's no value. That means there's no value in it. And that's in JavaScript. It's not null like in other programming languages. It's actually called undefined which we'll talk about in another tutorial. So here we have a variable A declared like this. And in JavaScript actually you could just Sometimes you can just say a by itself, and that would pretty much be the same, considered the same result. But here you'll get a reference error, so a is not defined. But what happens? So yeah, you have to declare a somehow. You got to say it's something. So what happens if I'm just coding, and I forget the right var? I just say a equals five, and you'll see something. Hold on a second and save it. Uh, here we go. You'll get five, right? Because and this is kind of weird because we didn't say it was a variable. We just said some a, sort of a equals five. So let's try to change that value now. Let's say a equals six right after that. Actually, let's do the console. Let's do a equals six. This was a weird, actually, I'm showing you this because when I first started using JavaScript, I did this, I tested it out to see, and it doesn't actually work as I, as it does. Whoops, I wrote B. I should write A again. So, and here is six. So it works, to be frank. But if I did this, so because I, because I accessed it and used again, what if I did right after five, I change my mind and say, okay, I want to make it six. You're going to see that it changes. This. Okay, it worked. So in some before and I checked this, actually what I'm just trying to show you that is go declaring A like this is bad practice because this means that we already declared an A and there should be an A. It, we, JavaScript assumes that there is some sort of A already declared as like a variable. And this can be problematic at later times because you might want to have a variable A. Well, actually, I should explain a little better. In JavaScript, every time you call var, you sort of let's say you call var a you reset in it's really it's a little tough to explain but let's in short you say you reset the whole memory involved allocated for a so every time you call var you make a new allocation like this you just sort of deal with what you already have and it's, it's a little confusing this is sort of like one of the little nuances of JavaScript both of these are accurate themselves but um, 
Let me just test this. See, this will overwrite this part up here. So like, see, this is just demonstrating if that kind of what, what I keep have been saying up to now didn't make sense. This is just showing you Java's grips leniency with sort of syntaxes. But you should pretty much, it's bad practice to do it like this because A could be anything. If a, if you're working with a web server or web pages with online, there could be a variable somewhere called A already that you imported and that could be accidentally overwritten. So you gotta make sure that you reset the values properly and they're in your script itself. If you kind of get what I'm saying, just just what the takeaway from my babbling is just uh, make sure every time you have a new variable, use var and then assign a value. Like do it like this or like this, what I'm doing right now. So var a or a equals six. Oftentimes you separate the declaration and the assignment. This is called an assignment if I didn't mention when you have a variable equals some value. You often do separate the declaration, declaration, which is var variable name, with the assignment, which is this. If the assignment is kind of long, which it can be if you're using functions and objects, we'll get to those in later tutorials in this, in this series, so don't worry about that. But anyway, I just wanted to show you that. And the last thing I want to show you this chapter is that we can multi we can declare multiple variables with one var keyword. This is called a keyword. A keyword is rep is a is a reserved word inside in JavaScript that we can't use as a name or, or anything else. So those are usually in blue. In, in at least in my sublime text you can change the colors in sublime text if you get around to playing around with that but anyway so like I said it's always good practice to use var and then the variable name so let's do that with multiple variables so let's say we have var a var b not break var b var c so we have these and sometimes it'll get tedious to write three of these lines so to optimize our code a little are like look we can do it like this var b var a var c and you could and it works like we'll just we can even so you can write like this and you can even assign values at the same time so let's say a 5 b equals 6 and c equals 7 so we're going to do console log I, I know I keep using console log it's the simplest way to show you how everything works just like you know that's I'll be using it a lot in this tutorial in this series console log and console and doc and alert I'll be using a lot so window alert if you remember from the last tutorial anyway so let's do that so save it all right fresh and there you go so we sort of I call this batch assigning I forget what it's really called I just call it like I batch assigned it so I called ABC I initialize a b c declared them and i initialized their values and yeah so you can declare them in one line like this and basically i'm just showing you how javascript's variables work in this tutorial we'll be showing you the various data types we have in javascript for this tutorial i'll be using something i'll be using this operator called type of we'll be talking about operators in the next section but this will basically, whatever type of does, it'll give us, I mean, what it does is it'll give us the type of what data, whatever data is after which, whatever comes after it. So we're going to say console, for, we're going to look at all the data types now. The first type we have is, actually I should say, there are five types of, um, there are five categories of uh Data's data in JavaScript. We have, so I'll write those in comments. So first we have strings. Strings are basically anything written in quotation marks. They're in my sublime text, they're noted in yellow. So let's do that. Let's write something else. So we're gonna say uh, console log, and then we're gonna say type of, and we're gonna say hello. So obviously you see this is, I like I said, this is a string. And type of what it's gonna do is gonna return the data type of whatever comes after it. We could have just we could have just as easy button this, stored this to a variable, and we can get the same result, which I'll show you in a second. 
So we're going to save our data. We're going to refresh. And it says in orange in my Firefox string. All right, so let's see how we can store that to a variable. So we're going to say var, we're going to call it str, and we're going to say hello. And then we're going to call, we're just going to call the variable here. So like I said last time, variables pass values, literal values, to by calling them by their name, variable name instead of the actual value itself. Instead of writing the, var the actual value multiple times, we just call the name of the, va the variable's name. All right, so let's refresh, and you get the same result. So for this tutorial, I'll just be, to save some time, I won't be storing things to variables constantly. I'll just be actually writing the literal values here. So if I, if literal, they're also like a literal value. I, I said, I keep saying literal values. I might even just cut that down to literals. Literals are actually literal pieces of data, not variables. Anyway, moving back to strings. So strings in JavaScript can be written with double quotes or with single quotes. However, they're actually kind of used a little differently. So like if you want to use these little in these quotes in a string, you would have to use the double quotes on the outside. So let's say Jake said quotes hello. And that works. Fresh and it gets a string. But if I actually oops, I did do that. But anyway, it's valid. But if I wanted to do, I believe it won't work. JavaScript might be a little lenient. Yeah, see, if I do the same quotations inside, it like kind of disables the string, it ends the string. So strings begin with the qu double quote or end with the double qu and end with the double quote or begin with a single quote and end with a single quote. So we'll talk about strings later on in their own section, not in this chapter, in a later chapter. So don't worry if, if it's not, if this doesn't seem sufficient right now. Um, so just remember strings are in quotes, single quotes and double quote or double quotes and are denoted in yellow in my sublime text anyway. And the default, I think it's like that as well. All right. So moving on, we, uh, let's have a look at numbers now. So that's the second type. So next we have, we're going to say numbers. We have numbers now. Numbers are anything really. So in JavaScript, unlike in other programming languages, we numbers aren't divided into integers and floating point numbers and decimals and so on. Everything is just number. So anything in JavaScript that is related to numbers is a number. So even so, two. Let's say the number two in my Sublime text is denoted in p in is it pur yeah that's purple. We're gonna have number. And even if you had a floating point number like 0.73, that won't be like double or something like in other programming languages. And in JavaScript, it's all number. So it's pretty simplified. And yeah, so that's one of another th part of Java's sort of leniency towards programming. Numbers are all on one type. All right, so moving on, next we have Boolean. So Boolean is written like this, Boolean, or bool is sometimes shortened to. It's either just true or false. So we're just going to make two variables, t equals true, var f equals false. And if you say t, so, oops. so boolean, and the same thing for f, same thing with boolean. And yeah, so you get that idea. Those are true and false values. I believe they could be one and zero as well. Actually, I think in JavaScript, no, no, they'll be considered integers. But anyway, when you when we work with if statements, we tend to work with true and false. We tend to work with Boolean. So you don't have to worry too much about that right now. We're just introducing the types in this chapter. I think I'll stop here. I hope this video helped. I hope you learned something and we hope to see you next time.